morning everyone Todd Metal at Weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well a few changes have come in recently in regards to the severe weather threat down the line here from the latter half of this week and beyond here so we're gonna go ahead and mainly put focus on that we do have a couple of marginal risks to go over as well really quick not much to really expect with the marginal risk from Monday through Wednesday Mainly can expect a chance for maybe some damaging winds and hail. Tornado threat is rather low at this point, thankfully. And the first one tonight, of course, is Florida. Here's our day two outlook, including Michigan, parts of Texas. Texas is going to become a point of interest as we get further along here. As we get into day three, of course, this is going to be preceding our bigger severe threat for day four here. There is maybe a better chance of a tornado here. I do think most of these storms are going to end up staying elevated. With tornadoes, you want them to be a little bit more storms to be more surface based here. So from Oklahoma City, Norman, Fort Sill, and then also Abilene, Lubbock just outside of there, and also Woodward be on the lookout for maybe some larger hail, maybe some damaging winds. Couldn't rule out a tornado, but I think as far as Wednesday is concerned, the threat's going to be a little bit less palpable with that. This is where things start to pick up, though, of course, as we mentioned before, here is our Thursday outlook. Pretty similar area here right now. Oklahoma City is not in that slight risk. A little bit of a uh, progression from that trough, though, could easily change that. So you definitely need to be staying weather aware. Central Kansas is a point of interest, as well as southern Nebraska as well, just outside of McCook, heading all the way back down towards Lubbock and Woodward, Oklahoma, once again. I think all the hazards are possible with this could be potentially an overnight event a lot like how last week ended up panning out more details with that in regards to any additional areas that we could possibly hypothesize being added to our slight risk here we go towards day five area broadens out a bit more this is where we include oklahoma city fort sill norman tulsa wichita uh, kansas city jefferson city st louis Des Moines, Omaha, Lincoln. I do think that this might be the bigger of the three days as of right now. We'll have to see how things kind of pan out with that as well. Definitely interested in maybe a northern mode having a greater chance for tornadoes than the southern mode, but we'll have to, again, like I said, have to see how things pan out with this, but definitely leaning more towards a tornado threat for the northern side of this setup here. Then on the following day, as that system rolls out, we're going to have a trough ejection and we're going to basically get a refiring or rejuvenation of this environment over here towards Oklahoma City once again for Saturday. And while there is no day seven outlook, I'm thinking we're going to see something very similar to the day five outlook, maybe a little bit more concentrated over towards Iowa, southern Wisconsin, also over towards maybe even Chicago, Illinois, and then also maybe even central Illinois itself here, and also Missouri. So with that in mind, pretty long stretch of severe weather ahead here. We'll definitely need to be on our P's and Q's here and staying weather aware. So here we are taking a look at our models here. This is the GFS. We will have the euro here in the bottom left corner. And what we're gonna do is put both of these in motion and the thing to make note of here is right now we don't really have a lot of amplification going on in the trough here at least not until wednesday afternoon we start to see the first signs of disturbance here this is our going to be our trough here it's going to be what will be the start of our potential multi-day severe weather outbreak this first trough comes in really starts to ramp up as we get into thursday evening and thursday night maybe even into the overnight here like i said a couple of areas of interest really kind of intrigue me here i think that this mode here could be pretty interesting over towards the kansas nebraska line and then there's a secondary point over towards once again southwest oklahoma and parts of texas i do think that there's going to end up being a cap over here once again a lot like last week will it pan out the same jury's kind of out on that still the cap looks weak but we've been having trouble forecasting the cap as well so it's kind of a uh, up in the air type situation as far as oklahoma and texas are concerned i do think storms will eventually fire the timing is going to be key as to what we could see out of that 
Now, as we continue to go forward here, we see that we end up having much better confidence in regards to the setup for Friday here. A couple points of interest already. Here's that point over towards East Central Iowa, then eventually over towards the Missouri Illinois line right off the river. And then, of course, we'll see this progress further off to the east here. I do think Chicago could be in the Friday risk as well. And then again, like I said before, this as this trough's moving out, new trough moves in, classic case of trough ejection. And this is going to ignite our Saturday setup here, where we could see some more widespread severe weather in very similar areas as the Thursday risk. So... Localized flooding is possible. I would almost even say likely at this point. So we'll definitely need to be keeping an eye out for that. And then as we continue to go forward here, this is the Sunday setup here. I do think that over here, depending on the timing of this, could have a, maybe even a couple of rounds of storms here. Maybe some overnight tornadoes are possible, not necessarily likely, but with the warm sector in place in this ridge over towards the central part of Illinois, maybe even towards Chicago, like I mentioned before, I think we could get a couple of different rounds here. The first mode could be multicellular. The second one could be a linear mode where we see damaging winds and maybe even a few embedded tornadoes with that as well. We'll watch that roll out. We'll see Monday, maybe even entail a severe weather threat towards the Ohio Valley to go along with this. And then that starts to look like it becomes the point of focus here. So we had maybe even into Tuesday here to go along with that and then pushing even into the Northeast. Then after that, here's another trough coming in, not quite as amped up as these last few that we've seen, but there could be a couple points of interest even towards the Northern Plains now. So we may have to watch South Dakota in the next little bit. So like I said, pretty long stretch of severe weather already ongoing. We're not even within the, we're not even passing the 10 day mark here. We continue to move on from that point you still see increased amounts of activity starting to shift more towards the northern states as we get into may here so like i said looking pretty busy great time if you're a storm chaser but if you're not definitely need to be watching the weather if you're towards the heart of the country towards the ohio valley towards the southern plains maybe even the southeast a little bit maybe not quite as much at the moment though still Definitely seeing a lot of signals favoring into the threat of severe weather on both models. So another signal that we're going to be looking at here, or another couple of signals I should say, is going to be our moisture return coupled with our surface temperatures here. Surface temperatures, of course, towards the bottom left corner. For those of you who have been here longer, you know how it works. So you can already see the moisture beginning to build from Tuesday night onward, really. And look at how the moisture really starts to advect to the north by this point. So right around our point of interest towards that low pressure, very tight gradient indicating a pretty substantial dry line here. And this is the gradient that I'm talking about where we're seeing these 60 degree dew points dropping almost to 17 over here towards Texas. So this is going to most likely be a point of initiation as we get later into the evening on Thursday. Heading into Friday, of course, you can see that moisture is just continuing to be pumped in from the Gulf all the way into the Midwest here. As this low pressure moves in, like I said, I'm really favoring that northern mode for some of the most active weather on re in regards to our Friday setup. As we go into Saturday, moisture recovers very nicely for our Saturday setup over towards Oklahoma and Texas as well. We end up seeing even some dew points in the 70s here, which is pretty impressive. And then eventually we see a similar deal occur once more on Sunday over here towards the Midwest again, eventually heading into the Ohio Valley for Monday. So like I said, very long stretch, another clear cut signal for that. And then this is where we start to shift a little bit more towards the Northern Plains here, where we have those 60 plus degree dew points. Now, sometimes we can struggle to get that moisture coming in from the Gulf. So there could be a chance we might even get a little bit of corn sweat to help induce severe weather over here where we get those richer dew points. So watch those crops. But that being said, even then, this is Wednesday heading into Thursday of next week. 
showing pretty good moisture returns for this time of year especially over towards the northern states we this this is a big part of why we sometimes will struggle to be able to get severe weather further to the north sometimes is because the gulf of mexico doesn't always make it this far north but this does kind of have that look like we could even have the two mixing so which is really interesting to see from a meteorological perspective as we go beyond that point though just continuing to see consistent Gulf of Mexico moisture just running rampant across the southern plains, well, across the entire plains, really, at this point, I would say, and then even heading into the Midwest, Ohio Valley in general. So very long stretch of potential severe weather ahead here. Could even span almost potentially two weeks at this point. And then also with the corresponding surface temperatures to go along with that, being in the 70s and 80s like i said if you saw the may outlook video we did this morning definitely seeing a lot of signs that kind of favor severe weather for this upcoming month here and also to close out this month too last thing we'll go ahead and do is take a look at what our radar could look like over the course of the next 16 days keep in mind this is a very long range look at this point I would say especially as we go beyond the 200 hour mark here but this is what we're coming together this is what we're getting after the culmination of looking at some of the model data we have this is looking into Wednesday this is when the severe weather threat starts to ramp up here not much in the way of coverage there but as we get into Thursday of course this is when business starts to pick up we see a little bit of initiation again over towards that Kansas Nebraska line and then a little bit over towards Oklahoma questionable to see how things kind of pan out with that mode timing is going to be everything of course and here's the Midwest on Friday a couple of different areas of interest right here right right on the edge of that low here towards West Iowa you could see some big time activity and then over towards central Missouri and then eventually Illinois as we go through that day and on Saturday, we start to see some more initiation. Could even see the early stages of a confluence band developing over here towards Kansas. And we would have to watch that southern flank for the more powerful storms to develop. And then, of course, we see this begin to progress into the Midwest here. Could see two rounds of storms here. First round could be multicellular again as i mentioned before and then here's that linear mode to follow up with that then beyond that point we get into the month of may see some storms over here towards texas increasing activity towards the midwest and those northern plains states now starting to come into play so between all that we do have these other smaller systems we have to watch again towards the southeast maybe even the mid-atlantic coming into play as well as even the northeast so Anywhere east of the Rockies, really, I would be keeping an extra close eye on the weather in the weeks ahead. There's that northeast setup we were talking about. And then we have another central plain setup that works its way towards the Midwest, Ohio Valley. And then we go on from that point. So like I said, very, very busy times look to be ahead here. Make sure you're staying weather aware. Great way to do that is make sure you hit that like button here and also make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Once you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified of every forecast video that we do and more. But that being said, hope you guys have a good night and I will see you again very soon. Until then, it's been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have a good rest of your night.